In this video, my intention is to show you all how you can build a labyrinth like I've done right here. Mine was a turf labyrinth, so bricks were actually built into the ground towards the end, and I'll get to that a little bit later. But basically what I wanted to show you is, essentially this is the pattern that I was going for. Since this is my son's Eagle Scout project, the church that we donated this project to, Unity Church in St. John's, Florida, they asked us if we could build them a labyrinth. And I said, a labyrinth? What is a labyrinth? At this point, I've done a lot of things in my life. I've never heard of what a labyrinth is. So this was all new to me. I says, I don't know, but I'll look into it and I'll get back to you. And I started to look at other scouts projects and it turns out like this boy here who lives in La Jolla, California did a seven circuit charger style labyrinth like this and this is exactly the style that I found to be the most appealing. Here's another picture of it with the entrance way from another church which had the pedals built in with four by eight bricks cut in halfway which is what I was planning on doing. I was planning also on using seven by seven bricks and approximately between one and a half and two feet width walkways that was the attention until i saw the estimate of what it costed at lowe's which made it completely unforgiving this project instead of costing around 700 dollars for this 34 foot labyrinth this project probably would have been more in the ballpark of almost 1600 dollars. so i was like oh hell no we're not doing that so the church did want to have bricks which matched their facade so here's a quick shot. They kind of had like these uh, red charcoal bricks because it's like a Mediterranean style church. So what I did is I got these charcoal style bricks over at Lowe's and these are four by eight. And we went ahead and we purchased two pallets of these, which we returned quite a bit. It actually worked out to be my, my genius son, which is much smarter than me as far as this math stuff goes. I had him get the job of figuring out the radius and how many bricks you're going to need, which he used a simple pie. 3.14 divided by the total of the bricks dimensions and he came across with you know a number and essentially we did that plus added 10% and that's how we calculated how many bricks we purchased. So at the end of the day we wound up buying around 1200 bricks. We wound up returning almost 240 I think when we were all done from miscuts. So this is pretty much how what we did. This thing kept me up for nights on end trying to figure out just thinking about this crazy pattern. Um, but this is the pattern, to keep it simple, what I was looking for. Now, the lines in the roundness, they represent brickwork, which is what I did. I rounded all my edges, so it kind of looked like this. I shortened the um, bricks right here because the church didn't like the abrupt turnaround, so I made these instead of making them two, uh, 20 inches, which all my pathways were 20 inches. This one here, we took off another that would have been seven and three quarters because what brick is about eight inches. So we would have made it approximately eight inches less so that it was easier for the people in the church to get around. And I went ahead and I did the beautiful pedal design, which you'll see here, cutting bricks in half and essentially making all the cuts and the miters and everything like that. And this was going to be beautiful, I thought. And it turned out the church didn't even want it because they wanted more space in the, in the inside. Again, it's not my labyrinth is their church so hey in this inner circle was six feet so you'll see this faint circle here which is about halfway in the middle of the circle so this is three feet wide across from here to here from here to here is three foot so the bricks stop here and basically that's the way a labyrinth is supposed to be done basically i mean i don't know if that's a rule or whatever but that's kind of like what i found and each one of these petals one two three four five six is supposed to be one day of the creation so it's supposed to be representative of a holy place that you can go and pray and meditate and just kind of like hang out. And, and I thought that that would be pretty cool. But apparently these, you might want to consider making your inside circle a little bit larger than I did. The church didn't like that. That was the only thing that the church had negative critiquing about my project was this one here. So keep that in mind. And getting back to this one, it looks like this would be pretty much small because you, you would think that this is two feet you would think that this is probably about six or so, right? Well, it's not enough because basically you want to have enough space for one person to be hanging out in each one of these here pedals. And that's just not enough. Six feet is just not going to cut it. So the first thing I went ahead and did is I went around, took some photographs of the project. And of course this is done for an Eagle Scout project. So there's steps that you have to lay this out to the benefactor and tell them, okay, we're well, going to go here. We're going to have about 
This building was laid out perfectly zero degrees north, so that way the, the door was facing due south. So I said, okay, we're gonna go, this is gonna be my south line, my north line, this is gonna be my east, this is gonna be my west, and this is where it's gonna be. And I said, basically, the angel's gonna have to get relocated, and this is gonna be the entrance to the, to the labyrinth, which is exactly what happened. I basically took this 20 inch width, and I kind of like brought it out, and made a little curve with my newfound brick cutting skills. And I did a turf labyrinth. I put four pieces of sod in here and I tied it into the existing sod. So that way when spring comes, this will all be nice and green and fluffy and it should look a little bit nicer. And you can see there was tons of kids working here. Total project hours, by the way, just for kids was approximately 130 hours. Adult hours, which is basically me working by myself, cutting bricks, doing all the dangerous work and stuff like that. You can add about 20. So overall, 150 hours went into this whole project. You can see what I was looking. There's my son hauling off some of the trash. Working. And you can see as he was working, basically we, we took small pieces of tarp and we use a trowel shovel and we were using hand shovels and all different like, types of things to try to work as we go and cut the bricks out going on to here take those put them in bricks put them in a wheelbarrow and haul it out because you want to make a mess in the dumpster at the church that was uh quite a job i'm definitely going to say if you're going to do this job get yourself one of those trowel shovels because man those things really work good and we had an edge cutter here which we used that was kind of helpful we use a weed whacker we use all different types of things i mean parents and people came by with tools and everything helped but uh, I just don't think that there's any perfect tool for this job, but somehow we got it all done. And you can see how all those rounded edges are starting to lay out. And these pieces here are, let me just explain to you what my thought process was here. I laid out all of the bricks two weeks before we started the project. And I did that for a reason because I wanted the bricks to be laid out because I wanted to see the pattern actually on the ground and making sense. So I could see if everything was straight, if the this line was here and this was fine and I used sticks and each one was 20 inches wide and I marked them so that way the kids can work pragmatically through here and make sure each walkway is exactly 20 inches as they go around. This is this was a really invaluable tool so make a few of those if you're going to do a project like that. And uh, basically yeah I, I left them in there and I let them settle so that way my thought process was when we come back a couple weeks later all of the earth underneath the bricks would turn yellow from not getting any sun and it will kind of leave you an imprint of where to start digging the holes and you never i thought in my mind that you're going to take these tools and we're going to get these almost perfect lines we just had to figure out the depth of the brick and you know we'll flush mount it bang it in with some uh, mallets and it would be great but in reality that is not how this labyrinth worked at all it was a lot of grunt work and these kids really did a hell of a job um everybody i mean it, it's a lot of work man I, I i knew it was a lot of work but i didn't know it was like that much work this thing was a hell of a lot of work to get done um so yeah i mean this you can see is how, how the kids are starting to work little by little and you take small groups working together because you want to keep the area clean as you're going i mean i just so much thought goes into making one of these things it's unbelievable but this here is my entrance you can see it kind of comes in there on the left side because you got off the center is, um, you know, where the labyrinth is. I want to show you another image. So you see these lines, this big old X going from here to here. This, in my opinion, was actually the hardest part of doing this job because when I wanted to set the labyrinth up um, and just figure out where the heck is north and south, here's how it relates to the building, right? So this building right here is like zero degrees going north south so this is 180 this is zero degrees north this is perfectly south so when you take a compass and you throw it on the side of this building this is an older building this building's corner here was like 14 degrees this one over here was like eight the fence was dead on zero so i was like i don't know what the hell is square so when we laid out the lines to zero degrees and we made the um, x pattern and we looked at the X on the ground and we looked at it relatively to how the church looked. It looked nothing like it should look in your head. So we wanted to go to Home Depot and start picking out tools for this job to try to get this thing straightened out. And it's really, no one knows. I figured we go in and find some old guy who knows a little bit about everything. And literally there is nobody who knows. That's just another one of these mysteries of building a the labyrinth. There's just no right answer. It's just called figure it out. 
and hope to God that it works out right because that's really what this whole project was a lot of it was for me was just getting it figured out as you kind of go along I mean just do the best you can to be honest with you and that's why I'm making this video because I really did spend a lot of time thinking of how the heck this thing works and how I can help somebody else out here's another one of the problems that we had uh, sprinkle ahead which you never expect that to happen here's my uh, entranceway which I came in off of the main entrance way to the church is the angel again and then here I use a die grinder and this rock whatever is brick breaker deal over here this thing works tremendously well I had no experience with brick work before I, I did this labyrinth I gotta tell you that thing works amazing these bricks are actually really easy to cut it's not as hard as I anticipated um, getting rid of this concrete because inhibited my brick work I that wasn't really hard either you just made some little cuts and hit it with this thing boom and it's gone and really the hardest part was getting it from up here to level down into the ground where the labyrinth actually starts. But those are the kinds of things that just make you go crazy thinking. And there's your main entrance coming in. Actually on the left side, this is one of the walking paths. There's some more of the kids and adults helping out making this thing. You can see now my pedals are gone because the church didn't want them. And actually, I was intelligent enough to use this ch uh, marking paint, this chalk paint. This stuff is really actually pretty good. It says it stays on the ground for like 60 or 30, 60 days. It really doesn't. I mean, once you hit it with the rake and walk around on it, that stuff goes away real quick. So don't be scared to use that. I found that worked really well. The orange was very easily uh, noticeable. And I also had white, but the orange seemed to be the most prevalent color. It worked the most best for us anyway. So this is where we cut in, coming in. This here is before we built the labyrinth, which is over here. That's actually me over there. This is just a map. We came in, we did a uh, flood test. We wanted to make sure that the ground was level before we went ahead and did all of this. Uh, some of the stuff that we, which we used was two pallets of bricks, obviously lots of tools, hand tools and stuff like that, sand, concrete, um, sh shovels and stuff like that we had I mean nothing really ex exciting the die grinder was really the most expensive uh, tool this here is my little setup which my die grinders there and you can see I was had a couple different varieties of hammers and stuff to beat them I was using crayons to mark the uh, bricks when I cut them and this here I just use and hold off the trash as I needed to go and this thing's coming along pretty well so this was, see, there's my son. He's cutting the, the bricks. Actually, he's laying out the bricks with the 20 inch sticks. So that way they're all kind of like uniform. And once you come back, you just kind of like lay them all and finesse them with your hands and make sure that they look per almost perfectly round or as close as you could possibly get them. Once that was done and it came in with the die grinder, cut all the bricks to make all my edges. And I did all of the edges, so it looks kind of symmetrical as you're walking through the labyrinth. You have two here, there is two, one on this side, two on that side, and there's a whole bunch of them over here, down here. Now you can see it's starting to shape up. So I got the entranceway almost perfectly leveled. It was starting to work in here. Um, some over here are still above the ground, some are in the ground. Kids are hard at work. I mean, this was, there was like 15 kids working this day. There was two days we were doing a Saturday and Sunday. It was a pretty, and they were working. They weren't sitting around. It wasn't none of that sitting around stuff. They were working. And again, here's a post picture of what we did when we had it all laid out. Um, again, I mean, there's so many different things that goes into building these labyrinths. I mean, the ground, He's got high here, it's low there, nice grass here, not so much there. Um, do we use sand? Do we use backfill with the dirt? I mean, all these different things that come into play, it's, it's crazy how many things come into your mind when you're actually building this project. But this was a nice size. It's it's a Chartres style, it's called a Chartres, a French style, um, to mock up like to the French Chartres style church, which is in uh, France. And they have a 14 circuit, which is made out of marble inside their actual church and this one here is seven circuits you see one two three four five six seven and then you have the entrance here's another shot actually that's when we were doing the preparation work 
and that's a shot nearing completion before we watered it down and cleaned it up with rakes and, and everything like that. But this thing is really, really nice. It's really impressive. Everybody who came by and saw it, we've had nothing but rave reviews and everybody really is enjoying it. It's, it wound up actually coming out as good, if not better than I envisioned. So I'm very happy with it. I'm very glad the church is going to benefit from this labyrinth for many years to come. So hopefully some of this information I'm sharing with you all is going to put your mind at ease if you're taking on one of these tasks or if you're contemplating making one of these something similar to what I'm doing. I don't mind sharing this why I'm making this video because I knew I had to because when I was looking for information there's people that have plans that have you know layouts and mock-up templates they're, they're crazy they're like thousands of dollars and people are very hesitant for some reason to teach someone else how to build a labyrinth for some reason I don't know what the heck is the big secret um, but I'm just a regular guy who did an extraordinary, I'm just an ordinary guy who did an extraordinary job with a bunch of help. And this is what, you know, you can do if you just put your mind to it. But it's nice to have somebody just say, hey, you might want to look into this and here's some things you might want to think about and here's how my experience was. So this is a real one that was done with bricks and it's a turf style. You can build this above ground, in the ground like we did. You could do all different varieties. You can. Uh, implement gardening gardening around it, which is a great thing. This thing would benefit if we had some nice protocarpus or some ligustrian bushes around here or flowers. I mean, there's so many cool things you could do with one of these labyrinths. And I'm just glad it's done. It is done. It's signed off and um, it's, it's wonderful to see it completed. But there is a lot of thought and a lot of um, processes that go into making one of these. But it's totally doable for the average guy. I'm living proof because I've done this thing with a bunch of kids. I mean, um, but it's it's really something to behold, and I'm glad that I've learned about these labyrinths and what they are and what they represent. I think it's a beautiful structure, and I'm really proud of my son for making this project. It's super terrific, and um, that's it. And if you have a question to make your own labyrinth, you're struggling with something, don't be afraid to shoot me a message. I love to help other people, especially with stuff like this. This is really something that people should talk more about and help one another out because it's really that kind of a project that's so thought-provoking that it almost demands it. So, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you on the next one.